Um, some are very, very active, their, their families are active. And so today I'm very excited to um, introduce our speaker is Dawn Lewis. Dawn is the development manager for the Mid-Atlantic chapter of the Parkinson's Foundation. Welcome Dawn. Oh, thank you Eileen for the introduction. And I first wanna thank you all for allowing me to be a speaker today. Uh, it's so important to me to spread the word about Parkinson's disease, and I am also happy to know that I did have a chance to attend one of your in-person meetings prior to the pandemic, so it gave me a great opportunity to meet some of you and connect with organizations that I feel would be helpful to the Parkinson's community. I also am happy to find that I'm having an Alzheimer's Association reunion here with um, colleagues that I worked with um, at the association. So that's nice to see all those friendly faces. Uh, just to get a, be a little bit of um, background on myself, I've been with the Parkinson's for just a little over a year. Um, Parkinson's was new to me. Um, it's been a great learning experience. I've had the opportunity to meet with Parkinson's patients, um, people in the community. And what was so um, enlightening, I think, when I first started working with the Parkinson's Foundation, especially after transitioning from the Alzheimer's Association, is that people with Parkinson's are younger and their cognitive ability is still intact for the most part until the disease progresses. So I've been very fortunate enough to sit down and hear their stories um, hear about how they had to transition from one way of living into another. And that's why I feel um, so good about the Parkinson's Foundation because we're here to be a resource for them to build that Parkinson's community. I'm going to um, begin sharing my screen so that I can open up my slide presentation and share that with you. So just give me a moment. I tell you, the world of Zoom, uh, I, I, I now understand what those correspondents on television feel like because you're in front of the screen all the time, um, you know, being able to spread the word, and, and that's what's so important to me. So before I begin, the, let me just give you a little bit of background about the Parkinson's Foundation. The Parkinson's Foundation uh, merged with the Association for Parkinson's Disease. They were two separate entities, and in 2017, they merged. The Disease Association mainly focused on research, understanding what's going on with Parkinson's, understanding what's going on with the total well being of that individual. The foundation inside, which was a national organization, uh, which in located in Miami was was focusing on uh, advocacy as well as community outreach and then their the fundraising arm for the organization when they merged uh, we developed these chapters the chapter that I am responsible for is the mid-atlantic chapter and it's a huge chapter in includes Maryland, DC, Virginia, Delaware, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. So I'm all over the place. Um, my focus has been the Maryland, DC area because that's the area that I wanna go first. That's the area that I'm most familiar with. So our mission is to make life better for people living with Parkinson's, not only here in the United States, but global. So we have partners that are international as well with regard to research and having a focus on the well-being of the individual. So with Parkinson's, there are 60,000 new cases that are diagnosed that we know about each year, and we know it's growing. Uh, nearly 1 million Americans are affected by the disease, and it's 10 million worldwide. Uh, our researchers work with uh, other organizations, Michael J. Fox, 
APDA um, to obtain information from them. So we're not the only nonprofit out there that's fighting for the Parkinson's community. We make sure that we partner so that we can share ideas and be able to be a greater resource for them. Uh, it's the second most common neurodegenerative disease to after Alzheimer's. Um, while Parkinson's generally, when it's affecting people, is long-term, most people live about 15 years with the disease. Not everyone suffers a form of dementia, but there are some as the disease progresses. Uh, we expect the prevalence of this disease to grow. And at this time, there's no cure for PD. It is not fatal. Um, and so therefore, we wanna make sure that we improve the quality of life for individuals in the community. As I said, we partner with several organizations. AARP is one that we recently began partnering this year. So we are able to provide them with information. And because we're unable to um, access all people in the community, this gives us another opportunity to interact through AARP. And since AARP has a large social presence, for those people who are connecting online can learn more about the organization and what we offer. Another recent partnership is with the Veterans Association because we have learned through research that um, men are mainly affected by the disease and also men who have been exposed to um, environmental sources. So with Agent Orange and, the, and other pesticides, we realized that we needed to make that connection so that we can again bring value to um, not only um, the individual, but another opportunity for the Veterans Health Administration to be able to share information. The others are a couple of research companies that we work with, which perform clinical trials on um, different aspects of the disease. And then not only do we look at the physical part of the disease, but we also take into consideration the well-being. Because again, um, with most people with Parkinson's, you don't have that cognitive impairment. So they are dealing with the disease uh, and the challenges of day-to-day -day activity. So the emotions can be affected and then the interactions that they may have with their family. So the Fresco Parkinson Institute focuses on holistic perspectives, just to be able to identify ways that um, they can empower and enhance the lifestyle of those with the Parkinson's disease. And then finally, I'll talk a little bit more about the um, centers of excellence that um, we have and where we have partnered with major hospitals throughout the United States. So I think most of us are familiar with the disease. I, I must disclose, I'm, I am not a doctor. I am not a clinician. Um, so I always seek out uh, people who are familiar with this disease because I know that the more I learn, the more that I can take away information and, and be a better um, resource for the people in the community. I've connected with some of you, Katrina, um, Dr. Brown, um, who have a wealth of knowledge about Parkinson's and understand the importance of what a person needs to do in order to help slow down the progression of the disease. It, there's a wide range of symptoms and it varies from person to person. So we focus on the movement, which is their motor symptoms, and then cognition and emotional, which are the um, non-motor symptoms. Um, Yesterday, I did a presentation with one of my ambassadors. Um, and the ambassadors that we have in Parkinson's are people who are living with the disease. And one of the stories that he often shares when he's um, telling his story is that with Parkinson's, it's so unpredictable from day to day. You don't know what you're going to experience. So 
he was sharing with people his story. Um, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's about 10 years ago. And then about two years after that, he had a freezing moment. So when you get into these symptoms and you talk about tremor, rigidity, rigidity, um, bradykinesia, postural um, instability and walking and gait, um, the impact that it has on an individual can be severe. What happened in his case, he was standing at the top of the steps and because he had a freezing moment, he fell down and broke his collarbone. Um, he is a success, he has a success story because today he is able to walk again and he has opened his own nonprofit so that it focuses on movement um, disorders and encouraging people with the disease to continue moving because that's what's most important um, with this disease. If you move, it will help slow down the progression. And I know personally, I've seen that when I've attended various um, fitness program sessions that take place. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Rocksteady Boxing, and that has uh, had a tremendous impact on slowing down the disease, improving um, the physical um, motor skills for individuals. So also, I just want to talk a little bit about the non-motor skills, sleep disorders, anxiety, um, depression, fatigue, mild cognitive impairment, and there's many more that the people with um, Parkinson's um, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and um, medications that can help them, you know, manage the disease. We don't know much about the causes. We know that 90% of the cases are of unknown origin. As I mentioned earlier, we are involved in many clinical trials and studies to try and identify genes that may have an impact on someone being more at risk with the disease. Um, we have seen that at least 10% of all cases um, do have a genetic component to it so that um, the risk of someone having um, Parkinson's being diagnosed with another family member is, is, is um, in this range. And then finally, as I mentioned before, um, we're taking a look at environmental factors also that could have an impact on um, being at risk for this disease. I'm living with Parkinson's. Exercise, we just keep saying move, move, move. Um, most of the people that I have met generally have formed exercise groups where they're not only moving um, with maybe rock city boxing, but they're also involved with different dance exercises that help with movement. Um, in addition to peddling for Parkinson's, there are programs at various Y's that um, provide this um, exercise to people. Um, medication and other treatments are, are important as well. Um, we're all familiar with carpidopa, levodopa, that most um, people with Parkinson's um, take as a form of treatment. And then there's other inhibitors therapy that are available to them. It's all individual because it's, the doctor takes into consideration where they are at the stage of their Parkinson's disease and what symptoms they're, they're having to manage. Also, what's most important is the social network. Uh, because people are social, they build relationships. In the Annapolis area, there's a physical therapist who has a large um, physical therapy program for people with Parkinson's. And I would say there's probably about 35 people who attend his group. Um, it's gotten so large and it's been so successful for him that he's, he's outgrown his space. But not only does he provide the exercise for them, he provides the social interaction so that they not only engage while they're with him, but also when they leave his office, you know, they get together for social gatherings and that helps them because it gives them an opportunity to talk about a symptom. You know, if, if they're having some type of um, discomfort when it comes to um, 
urinating. You know, they can talk to someone else about it who can give them, you know, an, an, an idea of or a suggestion of what they can try. Um, also, you know, they, they have an opportunity to come together and then the care partners, um, which is the equivalent of a caregiver, you know, has an opportunity to network work with other care partners. It's clear as I meet with various support groups that it, you will find not only the person with Parkinson's, but their care partners in the meeting as well. Um, and then the exchange that goes on um, by the end of the meeting, it, it's just one big party. So, you know, when I see things like that happening, I can see what difference it makes in, in their lives. Um, and then a strong partnership with the healthcare team, not only the neurologist. We often um, put focus on making sure that it's a movement specialist, someone who has gone through um, a fellows program where they begin to, so that they are able to specialize in movement disorders. It makes a difference when caring for um, a patient so that you can really understand, give them the proper um, assessments that's necessary in order to help them through um, their disease. Also, having uh, neuropsychologists available for them, the physical therapist. So it's just not a doctor who's seeing them, that it's a, a whole team of healthcare professionals making sure that they get the care that they need. So I talked about research. I talked about support and education. These are the three pillars of the foundation. So we focus on what we can do today, and that's where the care comes into play, making sure that we have these centers of excellence available for those who choose to see physicians at those locations, and then also making sure that um, they get the support. Tomorrow is research something that we are constantly involved in in making sure that there are better therapies. And finally, education and empowerment. And I'll talk about some of the resources that we do have available. So you keep hearing me talk about the Medical Centers of Excellence. We have 33 here in the United States and they are staffed with specialized movement teams. So in order to become one of our partners, um, it's a rigorous credentialing process that they go through. Um, it, we take a look at what are they doing when it comes to the latest medications and therapy? What are they doing for research and outreach into the community? In this area, our two centers of excellence are Johns Hopkins and Georgetown University. So I work closely with their community outreach departments because they're extremely active um, with different programs and keeping um, patients and people in the community aware of what's going on. Um, they often speak at different um, support groups. Um, it's more one-on-one -on -one because they want to make sure that people understand the disease and can become comfortable with what's going to happen as their lifestyle changes. We have a helpline available and that's staffed with nursing and social workers uh, with backgrounds in health. Um, some have already been um, certified in the Parkinson's disease, um, but we also provide that education to them as well. This is a resource for people who are calling in uh, to find out about um, the disease itself. Um, one of the specialists recently shared a story where a gentleman called in, he was in the parking lot, um, this is pre-COVID, um, um, picking his children up from school. And he had a few minutes and he was so overwhelmed because his wife, who was 36, was diagnosed with Parkinson's with two small children and they had no idea you know, what to, how to handle it. Also, he wanted to be strong for his wife. So that specialist, specialist was able to, to listen to what he said um, in that short time that he had and provide him with some consolation. And then also let him know that please contact her to, so that she could be a resource for him in the future. 
in addition to the helpline, since this is my chapter, I also receive calls from people who are newly diagnosed or who are looking for support in other ways, um, dependent upon where they are at their the stage in their disease. The research uh, is, again, it's overwhelming. There's so much that we need to do. Research really didn't begin for Parkinson's until really about 20 years ago, and it's been sporadic. So with the merger in the partnerships that we've established, we've been able to um, be more consistent and identify um, where our focus should be. PD gene ration is something is, um, is, a, is a study that we, we piloted last year. Um, when we piloted, it was done at a couple of uh, centers of excellence and people were asked to come in in order to take a blood test. Now we've rolled it out so that it's something that people can take advantage of online so that we can collect information from more people. And it's a saliva test so that the test is intended to um, identify genes and then provide genetic counseling to people who choose to participate. So we encourage as many people to participate so we can build up um, our sample size. The foundation invests over $10 million um, in promising scientists. So we're always looking for something new. We're looking for an idea that a scientist has. And of course, you know, with cannabis, that's a huge subject. So we recently had a scientist submit a paper on research that they want to do for cannabis. And again, ongoing analysis with regard to the epidemiology of the disease. Now, our second pillar is education and empowerment. And we offer a series of booklets. Everything that we offer, we want to be able to provide to our PD community at no cost. We have an online presence so that for those who are comfortable with going online and checking out our, our series of books, um, they can access it that way. Or um, I'm the resource as well to make sure that they get the materials. So this is a series of eight books. I'm just displaying three of them. Um, but some others include fitness, nutrition, um, caring and coping when having the disease, psychosis, um, sleep. So there's lots of books available based on the symptoms that um, someone may have um, with Parkinson's. We also have podcasts available. There's usually at least new podcasts um, that go live every, well, twice a month. And then there's a library of over 200 topics that people can access at any time. And we always encourage them to do that because again, people with Parkinson's want to be able to learn more about the disease to better understand it. And then finally, the Aware and Care Kit, which I'll talk a little bit more. Um, but this kit has proven to be very important to um, people with Parkinson's. Now, we had to pivot because of COVID, which all of you understand because you were in the same situation as well. So our communications department and programming department did an awesome job in putting together a new program, which we call PD Health at Home. And it was rolled out in April, which happened to be Parkinson's month. Um, and so what it is, uh, it's a program that they can take advantage of every day of the week. Um, we call Monday Mindfulness Monday, Tuesday Expert Briefing, Wednesday, Wednesday Wellness Wednesday, Take Time Thursday, and Fitness Friday. So these are available live on the day of that um, programming. And the whole intent was to make sure that we kept people engaged, that we could help them reduce the stress of COVID, that we could help them reduce the stress if they were seeing a decline in their um, abilities because they're not getting out as much. Um, not only are they live, but they're also available um, for a person who wants to pull them up at any time to view. And I always encourage support groups to take advantage of this as well, because from time to time, 
they're looking for different subjects to speak on um, and share with their group. The Aware and Care Kit. This is, um, has proven to be invaluable to people with Parkinson's uh, that I have had sat down and have conversations with and whatever I present and I bring this up immediately, um, people will share their own story. So this is their little black bag. I equate it to the bag that you have, suitcase you have ready to take to the hospital when it's delivery time. Um, it's important to have this and to make it, it's even more important, is to make sure that you complete the information. There's a medication form that the person would just complete with the medications and therapies that they're on. And then there's a fact sheet for the nurses to make sure that they are aware of the medications and things to consider for that person. An ID bracelet, a medical alert card. Again, because of the symptoms that people have with Parkinson's, um, Sometimes they can be perceived as being intoxicated, something very similar that you hear about with Alzheimer's. And so that's why um, when they carry this around, people can make sure that they understand the person has Parkinson's. The key for a Parkinson's um, patient while they're in the hospital, whether it's an emergency or um, scheduled visit, is that their medication is taken on time because of their on and off times. So this, the purpose of this is to make sure that um, the medical staff is aware of what's going on. Some people even keep the medication sheet by their bedside so that either their care partner or um, themselves could make sure that they bring it attention to the attention of the medical staff. Um, Finally, I just want to end with educating and empowering the community. We're able to do all of this because um, the community comes together and every year we have what we call our moving day and it's a walk. It's a huge exhibit of a um, circuit with various exercises so that people can engage and better understand the type of exercise that's important to a person with um, PD and then also uh, the education on um, medication and how to best manage um, the disease. So I wanna end with, you know, we're always looking for people to get involved. Last year, we had a policy form. Um, and so we're always looking for advocates um, to support the organization, volunteers. In this area, it is just me. And I don't know what I would do if I didn't have my wonderful volunteers to help spread the word. Um, I'm also looking for stories. I, I just recently um, uh, created a newsletter, so I'm always looking for people who are willing to share their Parkinson's story. So that again, it can be shared with others um, so that they know that, um, when it comes to, especially with newly diagnosed and managing the disease that it can be managed. So I hope that that's given you a clear understanding of what the foundation is all about. I am um, available for any questions you may have. Um, if you do have patients or clients with Parkinson's, feel free to reach out to me because I would happy, be happy to share um, information that we have available and um, um, movement specialists that we have that are, are, are can help with their needs. So thank you very much for allowing me to talk. Are there any questions? I'll stop sharing my screen so that if there are any a chat box, I can answer them. Hey, Dawn, it's Julie. I just would love it if you would um, maybe get your contact information into the chat box so that we can have it. Okay, I can do that. I feel like I run into people more often these days who have just been diagnosed with Parkinson's. So I am sure that I will be sending some folks your way. Oh, great. Um, and I just read in the chat box, Fox Rehab. Yes, I am familiar with Fox Rehab having an LSVT um, big and loud program. So that is awesome. That is so Great. important. Thank you. 
Yes. I have a quick question. This is Doug. Um, I know years ago there was a dearth of neuropsychologists in Frederick. Um, do you know the situation now? I just looked at, um, what was the name of the place? The Monocacy Center, which looks to be an autism, focused on autism and ASD, but a couple of neuropsychologists, it looked like neuropsychologists on their staff, or I was sorry if you know of that, because clearly they're huge. Um, uh, they're a very needed resource in not just Parkinson's, but Alzheimer's and other dementias as well. Um, I am not familiar with them, and that's why I had started um, making my rounds in Frederick uh, right. to become familiar with um, movement specialists and um, groups like Fox who do offer LSDT, big and loud. Um, so Dr. Brown, if you could share that information with me, that would be awesome. Sure, I'd but I could reach put out Google to them. on them. There used to be a guy, uh, other son, one was a, psych a psychiatrist and the other was neuropsychologist. Um, but I know that they have uh, several years ago those their practice and they were the only resources I knew of. So I'll pass this contact in for long that I found in a quick and dirty Google search. Oh, okay. That would be great. Uh, yeah. Again, because I do get calls from people, I received a call from someone in Chincoteague um, whose parent has Parkinson's and you know she was at a loss as to a movement specialist to go to and um, where she could receive therapy. So knowing what exists in various areas would be so helpful. And I usually uh, post that on my um, website as well so that people can access it if they're, you know, just doing an online search. Anybody else have any other questions? Well, I, I, I did share my um, contact information so that if you do have a question later, feel free to reach out. Dawn, I just wanna double check the email address that you wrote down has two I's in Lewis. Is that a typo? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher, thank you for picking that up. <laughs> no, I'm for doing it myself. So, um, so, yeah. But yes. Um, and Dawn, what's the link? Is there a website that they would go to um, to access mm -hmm. those virtual I activities? Can, I can add that as well. Yeah, that would be great. Um, it, it, it is a robust um, um, website that gives you a lot of information. And, and, and as I mentioned earlier, videos that you can bring up and fact sheets. So if someone doesn't want the entire publication, there are... Uh, over a hundred fact sheets that deal with symptoms and things to think about from hospice uh, to um, working with Parkinson's. So there's in, invaluable information that's always available there. Thank you. And that one is Parkinson without an S.org. Correct. Yeah. Parkinson.org. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, excellent. And um, lots of other good stuff happening in the chat. We can, um, Troy, I think we get an email with the context of the chat that we can send out to everybody after the meeting. Um, so if you're not able to jot that stuff down or click on the links now, we'll send it out to you. But um, some great information about other uh, programs, CEU events and uh, other resources, plus some great introduction. So um, thank you. Uh, good to have everybody uh, here and engaged this morning. And Don, thank you. Um, next big topic for us, we'll tend to some business, is the elections. Uh, as you know, we are moving to an online um, election platform. I'm very happy to say that we have some awesome folks who stepped up and volunteered to take the open positions. Uh, so oh, uh, Angela Martin has uh, volunteered. Uh, so let me first say that there are no um, contests. So we don't have multiple people. So. Uh, Troy is going to, I assume, send out the email. We'll be sending an email to members. It's a Google election form. Um, we are hoping that nothing nefarious happens to our election. Uh, it's coming to you uh, via email for um, members to respond to that. Because there is no contest, I'm, I'm making the assumption that all of these folks are easily going to be voted in. Uh, the folks that have volunteered to serve are Angela Martin as treasurer, um, Lisa Flannery as vice president, Katrina Wolf as member at large, and Bonnie Elliott as our expo committee liaison. So many, many, many thanks to you guys. Appreciate it. 
and I will reach out and the next week we'll set up a, a online board meeting so that we can all connect and go forward. So thank you to all of you. Uh, very much appreciate that. Anybody have any questions about elections or anything we need to talk about regarding that? We're done with that topic. Um, webinar series, I just want to remind everybody tonight is the third webinar in our Compass for Caregiver series. Um, they have been very successful so far. We really do, we really averaged about, I would say, 20 to 25 attendees at those events. Um, really want your help in spreading the word. We've got some great speakers. Tonight is uh, Kylie Van Waveren from Frederick Health Hospice talking about navigating loss and life changes. Um, certainly timely, whether you are a caregiver or not in the midst of this pandemic, we're all facing uh, loss and life changes. So uh, we're excited about Kylie's presentation tonight. Uh, next month, Nav uh, McGean is uh, pr our presenter talking about navigating the holidays, which we know are tough for caregivers in the best of times, but this year certainly pose a whole bunch of new problems. So, uh, and then December, uh, navigating the detours, helping caregivers adjust to, as we know, those constant uh, changes and hits that pull them in different directions. Um, our committee meets the third Tuesday of the month uh, via Zoom. Uh, we have already started brainstorming and have some great ideas for the new year. Um, a couple of new things happening. Uh, first, I want to reach out to you, particularly our members, if you have topic ideas or you yourself are interested in presenting uh, during this one hour webinar series, not to promote your particular business, um, but if you have a passion about something um, and think that you have uh, education that you can share that would be useful to caregivers in our community, I uh, encourage you to reach out uh, to me and uh, we will definitely be interested in taking advantage of members as speakers. Um, we are also offering a sponsorship opportunity, and that's for anyone, whether you're a member or not. If you're interested in sponsoring a webinar, um, $100 to do one, $250 to do three. Um, your logo um, and business information will be on a slide at the beginning, a static slide at the beginning of the presentation. You'll have the opportunity to submit to us a 30-second Oh, we haven't actually confirmed 30 second, one minute video that you can talk about your business and promote your business that we would play uh, at the start of the webinar and then your contact information and business information uh, at the end, uh, end slide of the seminar. So um, a great opportunity. It is a very captive audience of caregivers. Uh, I'm definitely seeing in the registrations that fewer professionals are registering now and it is more almost exclusively family caregivers. So um, a great opportunity. I will share, Troy, I don't know if you got my email. I sent the link. If you don't mind putting that in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, and then we'll send an email out as well. Um, we've had some technical difficulties, so I can't coordinate payment via WUFU right now, but we'll take your name and contact information via the WUFU registration. And then uh, one of us will reach out to you to coordinate payment and hopefully we can get that uh, fixed with Angela's expertise. Um, Anybody have any questions about the webinar series? Um, good, good stuff. I, I'm really excited. We've got some great topic ideas for next year. And again, really look forward to your, um, your information, your ideas for new topics for caregivers. And please, please help us spread the word. So each month that flyer that we have is static through the end of December. It has all of the webinars. It's the same link to register. Um, people can register right up until the last second is when they, as soon as they register, the Zoom link comes back to them. So it's not too late to share it today for tonight's six o'clock webinar. But please help us each month by putting that out there to your caregivers, putting it on your Facebook page. Um, we think there's some great topics and they can share them and they're certainly not bound by the county limits anymore. Anybody can attend. So um, thank you for that. Uh, I don't really have any other business. Anybody else on the board have anything I'm forget? Oh, Troy, we do have other business. A uh, few items, folks. Uh, we've been talking about for a while, we we're gonna switch email platforms to be more in uniform as to what our website is and to hopefully introduce other technologies to the ESPC. Just wanna let everybody know is please do not use the old ESPC email address. 
The new one is simply info at ecfrederick.com. Hopefully you've been seeing quite a few emails coming out from that address. If you have not, please again, info, and I'll put it in the chat, info at ESPC Frederick. Send us an email to let us know if you've not been receiving that. For our members, the events we've been doing like today and the event for tonight, we've been starting to send out calendar invites as a reminder to also make it easier. If you are a member and if you have not seen any of these come across, again, please e email back info to ESPC Frederick. Thank you. Joy, thank you. And thank you so much for all of your work. That email, that old email, what we were finding is half of you weren't getting the emails. Google was blocking email. So we're hopeful that this new um, uh, email provider will allow us to be uh, more reliable in getting information out to you and hopefully reducing the amount of spam that we were getting back in the ESPC box. So um, appreciate that. Anybody have any other announcements or questions? It's a quiet group today. Unmute yourself if you're muted. I posted in the chat, Oasis is um, hosting a free CE event for social workers and case managers. So if anyone wants to share the link that I put, it's um, we're partnering with Generations uh, and that's on October 27th at noon. Thank you. Oh, it's so sad. This would be the time of year when there are all sorts of events going on. It's crazy that um, none of us are able to have them anymore. But anybody, uh, so it's 945. I'm happy to go through quick introductions if you guys want. Actually, first, let me, we do have some newcomers. So let's, let me uh, welcome them first and give them an opportunity to say hello. Randy Gray, good to have you. Hi, thank you very much. This was very informative. I really enjoyed this. Uh, so Randy, yeah, tell us where you're at now. I'm sorry? I said, go ahead and tell us a little about what you're doing these days. Yeah, I'm the new director at Partners in Care in Frederick. I've been in the county for over 30 years, and I had never heard of this organization. I think it is, and I, knew, I know you guys hear this term all the time, I just think it's one of the best kept secrets around, and I'm trying to make that not the case any longer trying to do um we've done some videos and done some uh, press releases trying to really get the word out and during the pandemic we are still driving people to the doctor to the grocery store to the food bank we are helping people over 60 years old they have to be able to advocate for themselves um, but they want to be independent in their own homes and there are a lot of people in that situation. They just can no longer drive. Now, when it's not a pandemic, then we're going into their homes. We have a, uh, a handyman, handy woman service. We're gonna do light repairs, fix that leaky faucet, fix that toilet that won't stop running, do some light dusting, um, vacuuming help out just with little things. We're not gonna rewire your kitchen or paint your living room, um, but, but little things. And safety is always number one. We're looking for those broken handrails, those steps going upstairs that one of the steps looks like it could break on you or, or cause you to fall. So we're looking at those kinds of things and we're really trying to help those 60 and over in our community remain independent. Randy, um, great again to have you at the helm and hopefully to um, kind of increase the visibility and hopefully you and Eileen can connect and maybe be a speaker um, at one of our future meetings so that we can all get more information about what's happening at Partners in Care. But I would love uh, to glad to have you that. joining us. And then um, Nicole, you are new, right, today? Yes, I am. Thank you for uh, allowing me to participate. This has been really wonderful. I'm with uh, Kindred at Home and we are branching into the Frederick County area. I have been in the home health hospice arena for about 13 years. So I'm well versed in Howard County where I was born and raised, as well as the Baltimore County and City and Hartford. But I look forward to venturing into Frederick County and I have had the pleasure of meeting with um, Eileen and Christy 
already, which they were very wonderful in introducing me to this organization. And I look forward to connecting with each and every one of you and seeing how we can partner in the community. Perfect. Uh, Nicole, welcome to Frederick County. I think you'll find um, lots of people like Christy and Eileen that are welcoming and happy to help you get connected um, to folks here. So good to have you. Anybody else that's new that hasn't been to ESPC before? I think we've got a lot of regular timers. Do you guys want to go through and do a quick, uh, we've got about 10 minutes. So if everybody just does a quick Quick, quick introduction, that would be, um, that would be great. I know that the last time we did this, I overlooked the people that were on the telephone. So I'm gonna start with that. Is there anybody that's on the phone that we can't see? Amanda Crawford with Right at Home. We know you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the phone this morning. <laughs> uh, perfect, good to have you, Amanda. Um, I, I'm just going to start at the top of the list. Chris, you want to go ahead and give a quick introduction and just remember to unmute yourself. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Chris King with Beata Home Health, providing services for nursing, PT, OT, speech, those kinds of things in the home covered by Medicare in the Carroll, Frederick, Howard, and other parts of Maryland, as well as 22 states. Wow. Good to see you this morning, Chris. Albert, you want to give us a shout out? Yes, good morning, everyone. Elmer De Jesus here, uh, PR director for ESPC and founder of SCAN Senior Care Alliance Network in Washington County. I am currently working on a lot of things and hopefully I can announce it soon. But one thing I want to share with everyone is I'm getting married. Yay! <laughs> Elmer, what's the big Thank day? Thank you. What's the big Saturday. day? Saturday. Oh, congratulations, Elmer. <laughs> Nothing Thank but you. happiness. I'm sure there's no stress. I'm pretty impressed that you're it's here with Corona us wedding. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Thank you. Best wishes from all of us for sure. Um, Doug, you want to give us a quick shout? Doug Brown, I'm a physician assistant. I do house calls um, for um, homebound seniors with a focus hopefully on LGBT elders, uh, www.masondixonmed.com and Chris King and I talk regularly. <laughs> Good to have you with us this morning, Doug. Pam Dalton. Good morning and I'll say goodbye. I have a 10 o'clock meeting, so I'm glad we got here. Um, Pam Dalton with Spring Arbor, Assisted Living and Memory Care. It's good to see everybody again. Um, we are, we do have availability still, so please keep us in mind when you have some somebody who might benefit from our support from Spring Arbor. Thanks, Pam. Rayanne? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you, uh, at least virtually. Uh, Rayanne Butler from Edenton Retirement Community. Rhonda. Hi everyone, this is Rhonda from Amber Hill Physical Therapy. I do have some news, but I can't announce it until next month. So I have some, some big news going on with Amber Hill PT. All right, tune in next month, gotta be here. <laughs> Bonnie. Hi, good morning everyone. Nice to see all your faces. I'm Bonnie Elliott with Care Patrol of Central Maryland, helping families find um, safe quality senior care in Carroll Frederick, Washington. Counties in Maryland and Loudoun County, Virginia. Thanks, Bonnie. Durbin. Christy. Yeah. Hi, I'm Durbin with Come For Care Home Care in Frederick, and we provide in home care for seniors. We also are focusing right now on fall assessment for the risk and also on some dementia programs, and we do some training in those areas. Thanks, Durbin. Kathy Hansen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Kathy Hansen. I'm a social worker with Frederick Health Hospice, and I work with local families um, facing end of life situations and try to help them find the supports that they need. It's been a difficult time for everybody, especially for our, our local families really struggling at home. Thanks, Kathy. Eileen? Hi everybody, I'm Eileen McLaughlin and I am with Right at Home, 17 years in providing very high quality in-home care and assistance to uh, adults in our community. It's so good to see everyone. Thanks Eileen. 
Jenny. Christina, can I make a yeah. quick announcement? Sorry, my service is spotty. Um, yeah. Can everyone yeah. hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, just a quick announcement before I lose you guys. Uh, we are moving forward. Um, I sent out an invitation for the case management resource fair. Um, so if anyone is interested in that, um, Eileen, if you could put a my email address in the chat box, I um, this will be held on October 14th. It was last minute. Uh, Jackie had to get approval through several different people for us to move forward with this event. Um, we typically have it in the classrooms at the hospital every year, but this year we are doing it at um, the um, Frederick Health. What's the new name of it, Eileen? The Village. village. Frederick Village. Yes. So if anyone is interested, please just shoot me an email if you did not receive the invitation um, for anyone that may be new or just didn't get the invitation. We do have a lot more space this year since we're doing it outside. Yes. And that's it. Third, thank you, Amanda. This is our third annual, and I will put the information on the chat. Sorry, she's, she's driving. <laughs> she's going way out of pocket. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And thank you for co helping coordinate that. Uh, always a great event and great that we could, you could pivot it to be outside and safe. Um, good stuff. All right. Um, Jenny Pearson. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jenny Pearson with Maryland Relay. Uh, we provide telecommunications support for individuals who have difficulty using a telephone. And that could be as a result of hearing, vision, speech, uh, mobility issues. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also provide equipment at no cost to individuals um, through our equipment program. I am hosting a webinar on Tuesday the 13th uh, at 2, 2 p.m. It's free, interactive, and I'm hoping informative. So if you know someone that's having difficulty using a phone or you want to learn more about our resources, please join us. I put the registration link in the chat. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> uh, good, good stuff. Julie, you got a lot going on. Hi there, thanks so much, Christina. Hi everybody, great to see you. Um, I'm in my sweats because I'm busy. <laughs> but uh, Walk to End Alzheimer's is Sunday. And if you haven't heard, uh, Walk is going to look very different this year. Um, basically we're saying walk wherever you are, whenever you want to. Our opening ceremony will be online through the main stage platform. And you can find that by our Walk website, alz.org slash walk just put in the zip code look for frederick and that's you found the right place still time to register we're fundraising till the end of the year today we hit 50 percent of our goal which is flipping amazing so everybody awesome. who's out there doing it thank you so much i'm so excited um it's unbelievable thanks don and uh, i know mcgean's back she had to jump off but she's back and she's got some announcements on her end as well so please create a team register today thanks guy Thanks, Julie. McGean, you want to dovetail right into that? Sure, thank you. Um, I'm McGean White with the Alzheimer's Association as well. Just wanted to mention a couple of upcoming programs. Every month we are having a, a offering a free virtual education programs and early stage activities. The early stage activities are every Friday, a social engagement. They, they're designed for individuals with early stage dementia and their care partners, but any seniors can participate. Tomorrow is a program called Find Your Rhythm, a Drum Circle, um, using household items to make rhythm. It's a lot of fun. All of the registration information can be found on our website and on our Facebook page. Another one I wanted to mention is we are having a technology tools for caregivers program with one of Jennifer's partners um, at Maryland Relay. Um, um, and we're really excited about equipping individuals with tools to uh, do caregiving to the best of their ability, especially in this, during this pandemic time in the virtual environment. So that is uh, Tuesday the 22nd. But all our other education programs can be found on our site, as well as coming up in November and December on consecutive Saturdays, minus the Saturday after Thanksgiving, is our African American Forum. Um, usually this is a weekend conference. We're breaking it up to four Saturday mornings. Uh, fantastic speakers and lots of great information being shared and stories. So if 
you are interested, that too can be found on our website. Thanks. Thanks, Nadine. Good stuff. K Katrina. Hello, uh, Katrina Wolf with AgeWell Senior Fitness. We provide in-home training for seniors and specialize in clients with health conditions such as Parkinson's, stroke, um, Alzheimer's, arthritis, that type of thing. All of our trainers are also physical therapy assistants so we can handle those special diagnoses. Awesome. <clears throat> um, Lee. Hi there, I'm Lee Fangmeyer with Remax Plus. Um, I uh, work with a uh, senior population every day, helping them transition from the current uh, home that they're in and finding a home that meets their needs, typically for main level living purposes. So I have the uh, resources in place to um, uh, provide them with uh, the services that they need to make that transition. And um, I'm just a, a caring realtor in regards to the senior population. And um, if you have any clients uh, that are curious about the possibility of downsizing and moving to main level living, I'd love to talk to them further and uh, just walk them through what that could potentially look like. Thank you. Mary, are you still there? Mary jumped off her, oh, no. Nope. Hi, there you are. Hey, can you see me? So actually it's Beth. I don't know I'm why it shows up as Mary. I oh, no, no, that's okay. So uh, Beth Buryard, um with Fox Rehab. And we do, like I had um, noticed, uh, mentioned in the um, chat, we do specialize. We have clinicians that are LSVT, big and loud certified. So we work with many Parkinson's patients, as well as movement disorder doctors. Um, Fox Rehab is an outpatient rehab, but we don't have a brick and mortar building. We go to the patient's home and provide PT, OT, and speech services under Medicare Part B. Thank you for including me. Thanks, Beth, glad to have you. Um, and then uh, just an update, my day job here is at Daybreak Adult Day Services. Sadly, Daybreak remains closed uh, with no, no guidance from the state as to when we might be open. So um, when we can, we will be a resource for your uh, senior clients who need to get out of the house and be in a social medically supervised setting. So I'm hopeful that one day we'll be back in business. <laughs> Um, it is great to see everybody. Thank you. Um, Elmer put the, the date of next month's meeting, but it's the second Thursday of November. So we definitely look forward to seeing everybody. Please don't forget to share that Compass for Caregivers webinar um, uh, information with your clients so that we can help folks connect with those resources. Good to see you all. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.